Hi everyone, so you've seen my autumn TBR, or at least you've had the opportunity to see my autumn TBR, which means I should probably upload my autumn reading recommendations. This is something I try to do every year where I pick 10 books that I haven't mentioned in previous autumn recommendations video that I just think are perfect for this season. Some of them are creepy and, and lean towards the horror given that people quite like to read something scary around the month of Halloween, but there's equally sort of some mysteries in here, some warm cozy reads because those are all things I've Feel like are perfect to pick up at this time of year and each of these books I feel like would be so well enjoyed in the autumn or the fall. If you are someone that exclusively likes to read sort of horror and creepy books in uh, autumn however I do plan on doing my top 10 horror books in October but in the meantime these are like a selection of recommendations from various different genres various different books really, different age ranges as well that I just think fit in with this season and that you might enjoy and I haven't mentioned in previous autumn recommendations. So I will link the previous year's videos down below in case you're looking for more autumnal reads but without further ado let's get into the books in this video. So the first book on my stack is Scottish Folk and Fairy Tales from Burns to Buchan. This is a Penguin Classics short story collection. They do a variety of collections of short stories in, in this series from different cultures and countries and on different themes and this one obviously as you can tell is specifically folk and fairy tales that have been collected from different sources in Scottish literature. So we have um, in this book fables collected by Scottish folklorists but also versions of fairy tales written down by well-known Scottish writers like Buchan or poets like Burns and everything in between really. And they harken back to a lot of the sort of traditional motifs of Scottish folklore. There's a lot of fae, there's a lot of sort of travelling to other realms and um, getting lost and forgetting time or selkies or kelpies which are quite popular um, Scottish magical mythical creatures and I really feel like this captures a lot of what I love about Scottish folklore in one place but also is collected from so many different sources that it's a great starter for anyone interested in Scottish folk and fairy tales because it gives you jumping off points, check out different folklorist collections, different authors, poetry and short stories in the future and it's just a lovely combination in that respect. Also, which I think is quite fun, in some of them there's obviously a lot of actual Scots language used which you might not recognise if you're not from Scotland. So for example in this poem The Mermaid by James Hogg, the opening line reads, Oh where won ye my bonnie lass? And um, you might not know that won in Scots means dwell, so right next to it, it does have a little translation. So even if you're not that familiar with Scots, you should be able to read this and plenty of the, the stories are in quite recognisable English. So I just love this collection and I just think there's something like quite cosy about anything associated with Scotland. Like I associate literature set in Scotland with the colder months because obviously it's just a slightly colder climate um, and dark nights and for that reason this sort of screams autumn to me and I think it's like a really nice collection to curl up with so would highly recommend this one. We then have a book set in Ireland and it's a young adult novel named The Wren Hunt by Mary Watson. This is the first in a young adult paranormal fantasy series set in the contemporary world but about two different druidic clans. So our main character Wren is the member of the smaller of the two druidic clans and her family keep themselves secret from the more powerful druidic clan but at the same time are trying to spy on them. So she is sent to work for basically the leader of a local group of the opposing druids to sort of keep an eye on them and find out about their history because they have a very shared past and they maybe have artifacts from their shared past but it's not as smooth as she expects. There is a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet subplot to this book but it's also quite dark like it's got elements of sort of creepy and thriller for a fancy novel. There's like always like a little bit of a dark edge and you don't know what's quite going to happen which I think is quite in fitting with this season once again. I also just think that kind of like nature magic of sort of witches and druids outside casting spells, um, communi communing with trees and all of that makes me think of autumn. But overall it's just a fun fast paced engaging magical YA novel with um, fun characters who you're rooting for but equally some twists and turns that you don't see coming and that little dark edge so I think this one could be, appeal to a lot of readers. We then have some more straightforward horror and that is Tak to Me which is an anthology of arctic horror stories. So this is a collection of short stories by various different authors. Every single short story 
in this collection is written by a different author and it's been compiled by Neil Christopher. Each of these authors, though, as you can tell from the subtitle, is originally from a region in the Arctic, which it covers quite like a large expanse. Um, but because of that, they all tend to have quite like a cold, eerie setting. And I guess this could be a winter read, but equally I just think like that kind of unnerving, unsettling horror side of things really suits it to October. And then also because it's got like that cold atmosphere, it is fitting with the sort of changing temperatures and the dark nights. Like there's a lot about sort of like dark evenings and what's outside in the darkness in this book. In fact, yes, in fact, Taktumi actually means in the dark so like I said there's a lot about sort of like dark settings dark atmosphere but like physically and literally dark evenings and dark nights and this is such a spine tingling read plus because it's lots of different authors you might have different experience with each story but you can be introduced to like a new favorite like the first story in this collection really had me on edge and it's quite like a simplistic concept but the way it was um presented the way it was told really just had that there was like those really just had those chills running up my spine and I think this would be such a fun one to curl up on on a dark evening. You could just dip it in and out and read one short story or you could consume it all in one go and then potentially find some new favourite horror writers in the making and I really really would recommend this one for anyone who likes something a little bit creepy. But also not like hardcore like go gory, like I don't like horror along the lines of things like the Saw franchise, that is not my kind of horror. I like a little bit of eeriness and like a little bit of creep or like a little bit of things hidden in the dark and you don't know what's happening and maybe some ghosts etc and this kind of fulfills that. We then have a book inspired by another classic novel and that is The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargreave. This is a book inspired by Dracula by Bram Stoker but it is in a sense like a prequel. It's a imagining of events prior to Dracula. It's an origin story in a sense. An origin story that reveals the background of the wives of Dracula. Now this is of Kieran Millwood Hargreaves own imagination. It's not um, a, a story that Bram Stoker wrote himself. But what's wonderful is that she really roots it in the history of Romania. We have two sisters who are from a traveling community that are displaced um, during these raids that are going on and the original man who inspired the character of Dracula was known for capturing and taking as slaves traveling people so she's exploring that side of history in the origin of like a classic horror creepy gothic novel and I thought that was so clever plus the protagonist who is one of the sisters she's the narrator is such a wonderful character to follow I really felt for her I really rooted for her she's somebody who sees herself kind of as a background character or a side character in say the story of her sister but instead she is the focus of this story and I loved that and I loved the human element of this book it may be the origin story of a vampire tale but it's a human story and that's what I think so beautiful about it and it always feels like the stakes are quite high you feel really like captivated but concerned for the characters and it's beautifully told plus like is this cover not the epitome of autumn like this is just autumn in a book cover so why wouldn't you want to read it we then have quite a recent release but it's one that i absolutely adored and that is mexican gothic by silvia moreno garcia and this is in effect a modern gothic novel so it is horror um but it is like i said more in line with that slightly paranormal slightly eerie horror that i like rather than that like gory contemporary horror and this one is set in 1950s Mexico. It's also a bit of a mystery. It's about Noemi, a young woman in 1950s Mexico. She's a socialite, she's from a wealthy background, um, she's not quite figured out what she's doing with her life yet but she's trying lots of different things and living quite an exciting life. However, her cousin who she's as close to as a sister has recently gotten married and she and her father receive a letter from her cousin indicating that all might not be as well as they'd hoped in her marriage, that she might potentially be ill or in danger from her husband. And her Noemi's father, the cousin's uncle, sends Noemi to investigate and see what things are like in this secluded kind of English mansion in the Mexican countryside where her cousin is living to find out what her husband's like, what the family's like she lives with, um, what her life is like there. And of course it is dark and creepy and it very much gives me Shirley Jackson meets Daphne du Maurier but with Silvia Moreno Garcia's own unique twist combination to it. What I'm trying to say is that it's not just 
Daphne du Maurier meets Shirley Jackson. It has very much got this author's unique stamp on it, but if you like those authors, then it sort of um, harkens back to them. And I thought it's so captivating and compulsive a read. I really, really was invested and the twists and turns threw me through a loop, but I really, really enjoyed them. And this is one that I think is totally worth the hype. We then have one that is definitely for fans of mystery novels, particularly classics, because it's inspired by quite a few. And that is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. And I think you'll be able to tell from the last few books I've shown you that I definitely think Gothic literature suits this time of year. And I've got a lot of books inspired by classic Gothic. So, so this one is actually a combination of so many favorites. So this book combines, let me remember, Frankenstein, The Island of Dr. Moreau, Rappuccini's Daughter, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. And I love it. It was so clever and unique. And the fact that it's not just retelling one of those stories was what I loved so much about it, that it was like making its own thing out of a blend of all of those traditional things. And very much focusing on women's voices in sort of Victorian London, which is when this is set. And we follow a group of women, all of whom are related to the uh, famous characters from those novels. So for example, the fictional daughter of Dr. Moreau or the fictional daughter of Dr. Jekyll, etc, etc. And they end up coming together to discover the past of their fathers, the history of their fathers and what that means for them and who they are and explore whether they are actually monsters, whether they are truly women of Victorian society and if they are monsters what does that mean and how they identify with one another and bond with one another and solve these mysteries obviously with the help of Sherlock Holmes and Watson because it's Victorian London so of course Sherlock Holmes and Watson would be involved and I love that. It's so much fun, there's a bit of wit there and there's also just so many clever takes on those original stories and something entirely new all in one and I cannot wait to read book two in the autumn which also ends up retelling parts of Dracula so I think that's going to be so much fun. Then my last physical book I have to show you before I end up inserting some pictures is The Harp of Kings by Juliet Marillier and this is a traditional fantasy novel. It's not horror so do not worry if you do not like creepy. This is not a creepy book but it is beautiful, majestic, atmospheric medieval fantasy which for me I think perfectly suits this season and there's something about The Harp of Kings having read a lot of Juliet Marillier books that I feel is particularly autumnal. Not entirely sure what it is. Maybe it's because I read it in autumn but it really has an autumn vibe to me and it's equally a great place to start. It's a book that you can pick up never having read any Juliet Marillier before because it's the first in the series, the second of which has literally just come out and I'm also going to be reading in autumn. And this is about three main characters. We have a brother, a sister and another young man, all of whom are training to become warriors on Swan Island, which is this um, island that trains warriors. Mm, I feel like I just repeated myself. <laughs> but yeah, they are training on Swan Island to become warriors and they're basically being sent on their first ever mission which is more of a spying mission than necessarily a fighting mission but the heart of kings has disappeared from this local community and it is needed in order to um, inaugurate this new king and the people won't accept him unless the harp of kings is played at his inauguration. So they're basically sent to investigate where this harp may have disappeared to in secret and we follow all three of their perspectives and each of them has a very distinct personality which I think is really important when you have a multiple perspective story. Each narrator has to be distinct and I really enjoyed each character and their own perspective and how they all sort of grew and came into themselves as the story progressed and I cannot wait to see what is in book two. Like with all of Juliette Marillier's books there's elements of the fae, the fair folk fairies in this novel. They pop in and out of the storyline and it's a mixture of historical and fantastical plot lines. Next up however we actually have mystery novel meets romance. I do think there's also something quite nice about reading a sort of historical period set romance this time of year and I have a favourite which is also set in the 1920s plus is queer so I felt like we'd fit so well into this recommendations video. It's called Proper English by KJ Charles and it is set in the 1920s like I mentioned and very much has the atmosphere of like an Agatha Christie novel. Like it feels like a Miss Marple or a Poirot or one of Agatha Christie's other sort of like classic cosy crime novels but at the same time features a romance between two women which is one of my favourite things in a novel. Like if you stick an FF romance in a book I instantly love it more. And in proper English we follow one young woman 
who is going off to a hunting party with her brother and some of their mutual acquaintances. She's always sort of been one of the boys. She's very close with her brother and some of their male friends and she's never courted anyone or really sort of considered the prospect of marriage before being quite happy to just sort of take care of her father's home. But she's off on this hunting trip where there is a group of men and women, some of whom are married, some of whom are single and there is another young woman there that she ends up taking a fancy to of course. But then there turns out to be a lot of secrets. People are hiding things, people are discussing things in dark corners and something dark is afoot and obviously I don't want to give away what it is but she and the other um, female protagonist, the love interest, end up solving this crime together and it's such a fun combination of romance and cosy mystery in the 1920s and I love it. We then have a more contemporary thriller that I very recently read, which is We Are All The Same In The Dark by Julia Heberlin. So I just read this one. This was sort of my first read of Autumn and I feel like it is so perfect for Autumn. In saying that, it is set in Texas, which is obviously very warm and it's described as very hot, but I've never been to Texas. So I feel like in my mind, the kind of like dark broody setting gives me autumn vibes but maybe it's just because I read it in autumn again I think thrillers are also very suited to autumn and this one is such a gorgeous thriller because it's really beautifully written and it's really atmospheric and quite unique in its narrative I don't want to give too much away because I think um the way the narrative changes and adapts is unexpected and fun to read so I don't want to give that away but basically we have three main characters we have Ophelia a young police officer who has just moved back home with her new husband to the town she's originally from. We have Wyatt, who is Ophelia's ex-boyfriend from when they were teenagers living in this town, whose sister went missing 10 years ago, and ever since then the town has suspected that Wyatt had something to do with her disappearance, so it has sort of turned him into an outcast in society. He sort of lives by himself um, and talks to the ghost of his sister. And then we have Angel, who is actually a nameless 12, 13 year old girl that Wyatt finds on the side of the road and doesn't speak. So he ends up calling her Angel and enlisting Ophelia's help in discovering who Angel is and what her past is and what sort of dark secrets have driven her to have been abandoned on this roadside. What is she running away from? Is she in danger? And we follow all of those strands of mystery. We follow the strand of who is Angel but we also follow where did Wyatt's sister disappear to 10 years ago and some new mysteries that are introduced as the book goes on. So it's a lot of layers. It's a really interesting narrative like I mentioned but don't want to give away and for that reason like it's a really fun combination of things and it's got that dark eerie atmosphere, really gorgeous writing, really interesting characters who you become super invested in and high stakes so I really enjoyed this one. Then last but not least I wanted to polish things off with some middle grade because cosy comforting reads also seem very appropriate on these darker evenings and that is the Mysterious Howling by Mary Rose Wood because I needed to find a way to include this book in another video. It is one of my favourite middle grade series. I've said that a million times because I started reading it this year and I'm on book four with two books left to read which I plan on reading in autumn. And this one's another mystery so I feel like again it's quite suited to the season. It's set, I think again I like historical and it's set in 1800s England and it is cosy because it's middle grade and it's like witty and cute but also a compelling page turner which is really nice and it's about this young governess who has um, been sent off on her first job to um, take care of three young children that are the wards of this lord and lady but they're not actually their biological children, they were found in the woods having been raised by wolves. So they have a mysterious past. They also have a lot of work to do in order to be ingratiated into polite society. And then there's a ton of mysteries surrounding Lord Ashton, some of his friends, our governess's background, her school that she was trained at, who her parents are. And it is so much fun seeing how all of that ties together. Like in every book you learn a little bit more, but you also have more questions. And for that reason, I think it's so well done. And a middle grade series I think a lot of adults will really enjoy as well. So those are my 10 books books that I would highly recommend picking up during the autumn or fall months depending on where you are. Like I said I will link my other autumn book recommendations videos in the description box down below and I do plan on doing my top 10 horror come October. However I would still love to hear what your autumn reading recommendations are, what are you planning on reading and what do you think would make a great read in case I need some more suggestions. But with that being said happy reading and I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye everyone!